So you've got coilovers and you're looking at your spring seat adjustment wondering what does that do exactly? Does it change ride height only? Does it affect spring rate? And today we're going to talk about that. All right, so you've got some coilovers for your car now and, and you just open them up and notice that, uh, that you've got a spring seat adjustment here that can move your spring up and down the body of the shock. And that's the main benefit of the coilovers there, you know, is, is being able to adjust that spring position on the shock. And, and that is a ride height adjustment mainly. Is it, is it really doing anything else for us, Bill, or, or, or not? No, it's, it's only changing the position of this spring on the shock body. Yeah, and there's a lot of perceptions out there that, you know, for instance, raising this spring seat up is going to increase my spring rate, make the ride higher, harsher, things like that. But uh, why is it not doing that? Why is it just a ride height adjustment only? Well, I think what leads into that is when you've, when you've got this out of the car and you're putting it together, if you start messing around with the spring seat, you're gonna notice as you go up the threads, it does start to feel tighter. Sure. So it, would, it makes sense to your brain like, oh, if I screw this all the way up, it's gonna make my spring tighter. Yep. What you fail to remember sometimes is that as soon as you're, this is in the car and the car's on the ground, this piston rod is gonna compress and your shock is going to be somewhere in the middle of its travel range. Right, right. So the amount of weight that goes on the spring is not actually changing. When this shock is fully topped out, this can't move, it's, it's constrained, right? Yeah. So, so at that point, you're at, you are adding what's called preload to the spring, which okay. is a, a pretty misunderstood concept. Uh, preload is only adding load to the spring before the weight of the car goes on there. Sure. Again, it's not compress, it's not adding more weight to the vehicle. So right. it's not gonna compress that spring anymore just because you've added, say, a half inch of preload. Yeah, so if we've got like a 12 inch spring, for instance, that, uh, that is compressed three inches from the weight of the vehicle on it, and we move this spring seat up an inch, yep, we're gonna compress it more when it's fully drooped down, but once we set the car back down on that 12 inch spring, it's still gonna compress by that same three inches because yep. spring rate hasn't changed and vehicle weight has not changed. Yep, yeah, if you take, so if your spring is gonna compress three inches total, and you add one inch of preload, mm -hmm. it's still gonna compress the total of three inches. You're just taking an inch up just right out of the gate. Sure, and I could see how then moving that spring seat up the body of the shock will then, you know, move your ride height relative to, to the base here higher. So yeah, just a ride height adjustment is all it is. Yep, and there are some considerations um, with how far up the body you can go on the threads. Oh, sure. Uh, we don't put threads on there that you can't use, okay. <laughs> right? And there are all kinds of different um, reasons why you may use a shorter spring on a longer shock. Say you've got clearance issues, you're trying to get around something, you might have, you know, you might need your adjuster to be up higher on the threads just to stay out of the way of something. Okay. Top of the threads is just as usable as the bottom of the threads. Sure. Now, if you've got, you know, a shock that required, that typically would take a 12 inch spring and you're finding yourself all the way at the top, that might be an indication that maybe your spring rate selection's a little off. Okay. Um, like it'd be too light in that instance. Yeah. It might but as be. long as you keep the shock in its required travel range, you know, you could, you could utilize all those. You could still then, use yeah. it. You, you do still, with springs, you do still have a certain amount of travel that you have and before all these coils go solid. Right. So, um, if you, if you do find yourself, you know, if you've got a 14 inch spring or a 12 inch spring, which are some of the longer ones, and you're way up at the top of the threads, um, you know, you may, you may look at how much space you actually have before that spring bottoms out. Sure. So it's not necessarily that using the top of the threads is going to make your ride harsh or anything like that. It's just maybe a little bit more of an indication that it could be the incorrect spring rate selection. I see, I see. Yeah, and now like this, this shock here has a, like a take up spring and what that can be good for is instances where we've got uh, kind of like a short spring for the full shock length. And if we were to, you know, jack the car up in the air, let the suspension hang, um, the spring could potentially become unseated from the cap. So 
what we can do in an instance like that is simply run a, a take up spring like this, which is just going to fill that gap, but not add any spring rate to it. So there can be some combinations where we've just got a very long travel shock in place, but don't have a long enough spring to you know, fully take up that gap. Yeah, in this case, this is for a C5 or a C6 Corvette, where if you've ever worked on one of those, uh, clearance in the back, especially around the half shafts is really tight. Okay. So uh, we ran a, a take up spring with that just to make sure that we had enough room for the, for the axle and everything. So it's usually like some sort of a uh, clearance issue, why, why you might be running a super short spring on a, on a longer shock. Yep, okay. But um, all this is doing is just making sure that this cap stays in place when you unload the suspension, i.e., you know, uh, up on a lift, up on jack stands, whatever. If, if the suspension is fully drooped, right. you know. Or if you uh, come airborne, took it off Or if, jumps, if you, you, know? you take it off a sweet jump, yeah. Yep. Um, there is, you know, if you were to take it off a sweet jump, there is an unlikely chance, but not zero, that this cap, you know, could fall off. And that's where something like that comes in place. There's other ways of doing that, so we don't need to get too far into into how to keep your spring in place. Say, if you're concerned because you're at one end of the adjustment range or the other, you know, really just make sure that your shock length is in its usable range at your desired ride height, and you know, really take full advantage of of any of the threads that you might need. Don't be concerned that you're, you know, increasing the spring rate or changing the ride quality, you're not. As long as that shock is operating where it needs to operate, use the threads. We put them there for a reason, so yeah. yeah. Use them up. Well, I hope that answers some questions about what the spring seat adjuster does and more specifically what it doesn't do. Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, you feel free to get a hold of us on the tech lines. Check our website. We've got a lot of great tech articles that you can read that go a little bit more in depth in this stuff and uh, go drive it.